I'm about to show my age, right? Because I wonder if you guys remember Little House on the Prairie. That family spent all of their time working the land and cooking, basically in survival mode. That puts us in the position where we want our time back. And the solution is either make more money in less time or take less time cooking. There are many companies that have come along and offered us ways to spend less time in the kitchen. And unfortunately, they don't tell us that this processed foods that they give us that are going to save us so much time are also going to make them rich, right? While causing us to have three really huge problems that would rob us of that precious time that we're trying to get. So I'm going to pay for these foods, but then I'm not going to end up with the time and I'm going to show you why that's happening. The first of these three problems is that they cause us to be dependent on the company or dependence in general, but dependent on the company. I'm going to remind you about my two favorite books, like their new favorite books. One is a Salt, Sugar, Fat by Michael Moss. And the other one is Food, What the Heck Should I Eat by Mark, Mark Hyman. And those books have helped me to understand that the composition of the processed foods that we eat today are on purpose. What that means is that the food companies hired scientists to figure out the amount of salt, sugar, and fat that needed to be in, in the food that they're making, so this processed garbage, to make it irresistible to me. That word irresistible is important because the goal is that when you go to eat a cookie of theirs or some chips or a healthy bar, you want to eat more than one. I mean, is there a food that you could think of that you actually find so irresistible that you feel compelled to eat it? And not just more than one, like, like maybe you have two or three chips. No, I'm talking about more than a serving. So consider that healthy granola bar that we'd have as a snack. Have you ever eaten more than one granola bar at a time? Because I know that I have never eaten just one granola maybe when I was a kid. But I mean, in my adult world, I've never eaten just one granola bar as my snack. That never happened to me. It was always two. And I want you to understand that that's actually the company's goal, that we overeat their product. That is with the food company knowing that their product is too high in sugar, fat, and salt. Why doesn't it taste salty if it's too high in salt? Have you ever asked that question? And I think soda is the best example of this because I had no idea they added salt to soda. But why doesn't it taste salty? Science. They add not only the salt and the sugar, but they also add chemicals, in the case of sodas, that stop it from tasting off, wrong, right? And the, the, the particular levels of salt and sugar play together, and fat, depending if it's a food, play together so perfectly that it's just the right amount of sweet. It's just the right amount of fat and just the right amount of salt that helps everything to come together and just taste yummy, right? It's delicious. It's irresistible. It's exactly what you want in your mouth all the time. And so you don't even notice that this isn't really food, but a science experiment that went right. I was shocked when I learned there's 50 milligrams of salt in cola, 35 milligrams of salt in orange soda, and club soda has a whopping 75 milligrams of salt. I was shocked when I learned that I did not understand that there was salt in sweet tasting drinks. They know that the products have a lethal mix of salt, sugar, and fat. That's the part that's even disgusting about it. Is it so, so how do they get us 
to eat it, right? Knowing that it has a lethal mix of salt, sugar, and fat. Not that it just has some, right? An apple has um, sugar in it. Um, let me get a better one. An avocado has sugar and fat in it. You know, it doesn't kill us. These products have a lethal amount. How do they get us to eat it? Marketing. <laughs> yeah. Everything about the way the garbage is packaged, it's all about the marketing. It gets us to buy it. They're just the pretty, colorful packaging on the kids' products and the mature packaging with the health information, the focus on... Well, actually, the health information is the focus on the kids' packaging and the adult packaging, but the adult packaging looks a little bit more adult, but that um, healthy part is more pronounced, right? Because they need the kids to scream in the store about mommy buying that crap. And then you pick it up and you start reading the package looking for the reason not to buy it and be like, oh, wow, no artificial flavors or colors in this thing? Bravo. Yeah, sugar is not an artificial flavor. Neither is salt. So they can very well write that. And unfortunately, just because there's no artificial colors or flavorings doesn't mean there aren't chemicals. They're just not the ones that cause flavors or change the color. There's still things that make it shelf stable. They're, oh my, okay, I'm going off topic. They go out of their way to make us believe that the foods are healthy, knowing that they're not, knowing that information wellness warrior. And I say that with all confidence because we know when we look at healthy foods, if you look at them, can we pause for a moment and realize that most whole foods, healthy foods, don't come in fancy packages because they don't have to endorse them with a low calorie count or a heart healthy check to get us to eat them because we know that they're healthy, right? They're just sitting there on the shelves, labeled, waiting for us to purchase them based mostly on price. The marketing has a huge impact on us. First of all, we want processed foods because they actually are supposed to be just as healthy or even healthier according to their packaging, right? They're easier to prepare, so easier to get our kids to eat, make our life just easier, and best of all, they taste better. They're, they're fun tasting. They're irresistible. And I know this and I say this quite easily because our grocery carts show it, right? We're buying much more processed foods in our grocery carts than healthy vegetables and meats. And I was shocked by this. I was in Costco. And I saw this and I thought to myself, well, it's Costco. People come here for bulk items. So, of course, it makes sense that in Costco I see that, right? That I see someone beside me and there's hardly any produce and it's all packaged, packaged, packaged. But then I went to the regular grocery store. I went to Pravigo and I went to Maxi. A little bit later in the week, I even went to Super C. And guess what? I still saw the same thing. I'm walking through the grocery store. My cart has meats and vegetables in it. And their carts, everyone around me, I don't have any video of this guy. I just didn't feel it was fair. But everyone around me, their carts were filled up with processed, 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 processed foods. And, oh, and milk. There was milk. Most people had milk. And I mean, was it that you came in for milk and got suckered into buying all the other garbage? I don't know. But it's hard for me to understand how people are shopping this way. But let's go back to the original question, which is how does this make us dependent? Because I, I, I feel like I'm not being clear. So let me be more clear. There's two ways. The first one is that we cannot easily make some of the products and some others we just can't make. So for example, chocolate chip cookies, store-bought, it takes minutes to access, and then we're eating it like within minutes. 
easy. But if you tried to make homemade cookies, well, it's like 45 minutes to an hour and a half, right? Because you got to go to the store and it's not just grab the package and go to the cash. I got to go get the flour and the sugar and the eggs um, and the baking soda or baking powder, depending what kind of cookie you're making, the chocolate chips, if we're staying with this line of going, um, what else? I need some kind of oil to put in my cookies. Maybe I'm going to use butter as a healthy way to do it, but I might be putting anything else, but I hope you're only using butter. And then, so when I get that long list of ingredients and I go to the cash and okay, I check out and then I get home, but I still need to mix all these ingredients. So I can mix the, did I say salt? You need to buy salt. Then I have to mix the dry ingredients. And then I have to mix the wet ingredients. And then I have to combine the ingredients. And then I have to put them in the oven and I need to be patient for another, you know what? I got my time wrong. There's probably another 20 minutes there before those cookies are going to be cooked. And then I still need to let them cool off. Chances are this might take you two to two and a half hours. If you have to go, if you don't have that, all the ingredients in your house, and you have to, have to go to the store. Is it reality that it's making us dependent? A hundred percent. It's making us dependent. We don't have time. That's what we started off talking about. Now let's talk about the other ones though. Cause those Oreos, you only have access to store bought. Oreos because the recipe is proprietary and honestly I've tasted replicas and they've never tasted anywhere close to what an Oreo tasted like. What about cornflakes and other branded cereals? It's the same thing. I've tasted those off brands. They've never tasted anywhere close to what I could make or some other company could make and cereals we can't even make. Well, I mean, I'm sure some clever YouTube person has figured out a way to make cornflakes and maybe it is possible, but I'm sure that the time that to invest to make cornflakes is probably much longer than someone like me would take to make them. So what happens when we really want this thing that either we can't make on our own or if I try to make it on my own, right? It isn't working. We end up buying it because that's the way that we're going to be able to get it. So if you want the taste, you got to buy it. And now I'm dependent on whatever company makes this product. I want to add a little curveball here. We don't think about the fact that craving that product equals I'm addicted. I said the word, right? That's the way they keep us dependent. The amount of sugar, in these processed foods actually cause us to be addicted to them. And can I point out once again, irresistible code word for addictive equals they know what they're doing. So you know that feeling you have <laughs> when you feel a craving for your favorite cookie or chocolate bar. In my case, that's what I was chasing, right? Something chocolatey but maybe it becomes, I want a chocolate bar. Okay. I'll settle for chocolate chip cookies. Okay. I'll settle for something. Why do we get to the, I'll settle for something, All right? Cause you don't have the cookie or the chocolate bar that you wanted in the house, but now you're in your kitchen looking to get something else that is sweet and you eat it just to satisfy that craving for that other thing. That's some, like, does that sound familiar to you? right? That's similar to someone who usually drinks bourbon, but mm, there isn't any. So I'll have a beer, but oh my gosh, there isn't any. I'll drink some mouthwash. That sound familiar? The truth is back in the day when I wanted a chocolate bar, but there wasn't any, that should have been the end of the story, <laughs> but it never was never. Somehow when it comes to snacking, especially junky snacks, we keep going until we get something that gives us that hit of sugar. And we don't even realize that that's what we're doing. We're looking for that hit of sugar. The second problem that happens is that obesity and illness, that even though every wellness warrior in here is aware that eating cookies, cakes, and ice cream will absolutely lead to weight gain. We believe 
that there is a moderate amount of junk food we can have, right? This is what we're told by doctors, by nutritionists, who learned that from where, right? That there's a moderate amount that we can have to maintain a healthy weight. We got that idea from food companies. Ten years ago, or years ago, I should say, when the health professionals began to link obesity to eating processed food, a full campaign was unleashed on North America to convince us that weight was a simple matter of calories in, calories out, knowing that the ad foods that they made and they were selling us were addictive and making us fat. They then blamed us for not exercising enough. The saddest part of the entire thing is that we know about this metabolic slowdown. This was shown in 1915. So we've known about it for a hundred years. What I think is sad is that we give people this really horrific advice to eat less and move more. And then when they fail, we blame them for it, right? And that's basically you're blaming the victim because here's this poor fellow or poor lady who's victimized because they're suffering from obesity, from type two diabetes. You give them really bad advice, which you know is gonna fail, because we've all done it, it fails every single time. And then when the weight goes back, you say, yeah, you should have listened to me better. You should have had more willpower. You shouldn't have eaten that bagel or whatever it is you tell people, right? And that's really the saddest part of all is that we try to pretend that the advice that we give is really good and the failure lies with all of you, right? That doesn't, doesn't make any sense, right? How can like, 40, 50% of the population be so morally bankrupt that they let this happen to them? Is it not more logical that the advice that we gave was just really crappy? That seems to me much more sensible. So we're going to explain why this uh, sort of discrepancy exists. So in order to do that, you have to understand what happens when you eat. Okay? So what happens when you eat? is that insulin goes up. So most foods, almost all foods, have um, a mixture of macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and protein. So your insulin goes up to a varying degree. And insulin basically is the hormone that tells your body to store fat. So it stops your body from burning fat. You start to store some of the sugar and store some of the fat. Okay, And this is normal. This is a normal situation. So carbohydrates get turned into glycogen, which are chains of glucose. So chains of glucose in the liver is basically a storage form of sugar. Okay? And when you have too much of that, then your liver produces lipids, which is called de novo lipogenesis, and it basically stores fat. Okay? So when you don't eat, when you're fasting, so fasting is merely the absence of eating, your insulin levels fall. And that's a signal to start pulling some of that energy out, right? So you're going to start by pulling some energy out from the glycogen, which is your stored sugar, and you're going to pour some, pull some energy out of the stored fat. So you can think of it, the glycogen, like a refrigerator, right? You're storing food energy. And the reason it's like a refrigerator is that it's easy to access. So you can get put food in easily. You can take food out easily, right? It's just food energy. And the fat is more like your freezer, okay? So you can store more of it, but it's in your basement. You know, it's hard to get to. It's hard to get out. It's hard to put in. So you generally prefer to use your refrigerator. And it's the same idea. You have two storage forms of energy. On this water, science has known that hormones control storage since 1915. But food companies convinced and encouraged and paid off Wording can be tricky here. Doctors to join them. Schools, so medical schools to join them in blaming you and me for years for something that they knew that they caused. Why would they do that? They do it for profit, right? The more of their junk that we eat, the more money they make. Does it sound too simple, right? That's my third way of hope letting you see that we are dependent on them they make sure that we stay dependent because that money coming in is necessary 
right? They, they want that money coming in. Because healthy food doesn't compel us to overeat them, wellness warrior, that, that's the problem. Apparently, a normal amount of profit is not as enticing as a ridiculous amount of profit. That's why they do it, right? Can you imagine that we only made a million instead of five million dollars this year? If my customers are healthy, why isn't that what I want? That somehow, and it seems obvious except most of us are outraged when we learn about how the animals that we eat are housed and fed. We get outraged and we will give up eating meat altogether because we're outraged that that animal is kept in a cage and not and, and walking around in this poop and all kinds of stuff that it would never do out in the wild. It would never do that. And we're outraged and we don't eat meat. But somehow, humans, right, us, somehow companies have no trouble feeding us garbage and having our health deteriorate. And they don't get outraged and say, oh, we have to stop this. Why, why don't they get as upset for us as we get for the animals? Why not? Because me eating garbage isn't seen or isn't even the end of that chain. Because when I eat the garbage and then I get sick, well, then I need medical attention and surgery to maintain any type of existence. So now a new part of the chain has come into play and more money is being made there. But then when I'm living this existence, but I'm not happy because I can't do any of the stuff. Well, I'm sorry, do you understand that I was in tears when I couldn't go snowboarding that year? That one year that I missed, I was, well, that I missed because of health. I was in tears because I live for the winter to go snowboarding. Like that's, I look forward to that immensely. And I couldn't go. The fact that I couldn't even go longboarding I couldn't go, like all the things that I typically do to entertain myself, I couldn't do. I could barely sit and work. That was causing pain. Like what I'm doing right now. Five, no, let's say six years ago, I couldn't do it. Right? For a large period of time, I think it was like eight months before I figured out to start eating this way. And it still took another three months before... The pain went away because I missed a whole ski season and a whole summer of longboard. Can you understand that I was crying? My life did not look like... So what happens when we're crying and our life doesn't look like what we want it to look like? What do we do? We find a way to self-soothe by eating more of their garbage. Do you see how the circle gets completed? Because, of course, if I'm going to eat to make myself feel better, I'm going to eat something that tastes good to me. So I eat cookies, cake, ice cream, whatever the garbage was to make myself feel better, right? Wellness Warrior, my profitability to a company only ends when I'm no longer breathing, right? We are just that small puzzle piece. That puzzle piece that's missing that we didn't see is all the money that they make because of us little peons there, right? Because, oh, by the way, I'm not sure if you noticed, those are people in that image, right? And could you pick yourself out of that image if you needed to? Could you pick yourself out and say, oh, there, there I am, that's me? And that's exactly the point. They do not care that it's you or that it's me. I care. I care greatly. And we care about the animals we eat. Can I just point it out again? We need to understand that we're just a small part of the puzzle that keeps them living the lifestyle that they want to live. And we need to stop believing <clears throat> that people running these companies think like we do. I actually get sad when I hear about how the animals that I'm supposed to eat are treated right? That's why I've encouraged you guys, find local farms where the farmers treat the animals properly, at least while they're living and, and, and getting ready to become our food, that they're having a good life. Because it's ridiculous. I feel sad. But then companies are making something that doesn't have to harm an animal for me to eat. 
but it's harming me. And they feel no problem doing that. They have no problem. The So I'm not talking about the company because the company is an entity. I'm talking about the fact that people, people work at these companies. So the scientists that are making this garbage for us to eat that know it's not healthy. So the, 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 the people higher in the company who have, um, in Michael Moss's interviews, admitted to not eating their own product because it's not healthy, but they're selling it to us. You see yourself as a person, but companies see you as a heavy user or a potential heavy user. And if you aren't one of those, you are no use to them. So if you stop eating that and you're just casually eating, you're not bringing them in enough money. They need to figure out how to get you eating. Coca-Cola actually wanted every person to drink only Coke at every meal or Coke products at every meal. They wanted to be more drank than water. That was in Michael Moss's book. They, they, they were trying to be more drank than water. How does that make any sense, right? For a product that we know isn't healthy, casual isn't going to bring them a big enough profit that's going to keep those shareholders happy. So do you allow yourself to become someone's profit? So you're all going to try to say yeah, no to that, but the truth is we have, we are. If you still buy, process products today than you are because what we should be eating is whole foods. That's what we should be eating. Whole foods. One ingredient foods. That's what we should be eating. There is no need for us to buy processed foods. Weight management is not a calorie story. So any product that's marketing towards you that's going to help you to save weight, that's talking about calories? No. Weight management is a carbohydrate story. And every carbohydrate that you eat counts. So don't let companies trick you into believing that only the added sugar counts because when we look at those packagings and they're saying, oh, it's low in sugar, they're talking about added sugar. No sugar added, they're talking about added sugar. We, now that we've listened to Dr. Fung speak and Dr. Westman and Dr. Barry and Dr. Berg and all the doctors, we, know that medical science has known for decades that our body cares about carbohydrates. It has no understanding of calories at all because calories is a made up metric by a scientist to understand how much energy you would get out of a potato if you set it on fire versus if you set a chickpea, a bunch of chickpeas on fire versus if you set some meat on fire. But you also get calories if you set your chair on fire, but we don't eat that. So did you know that? That if you set some wood on fire, you will get a calorie count out of it. That if you set your house on fire, there's a calorie count to that. Do we understand that? That is just a measure of energy from something that was burned. Not at all the way that your body interacts with food. Your body does not burn food. Even though we talk about burning calories, that's not what our body does. Our body uses carbohydrates and fat and protein internally to fuel us and to build us. So carbohydrates as a fuel, carbohydrates are not a building block. Fat as a fuel and a building block, protein as a building block, it's not a fuel. It only gets used in a pinch. Right. And it, and it gets used as energy when it's being recycled, which is another thing that people misunderstand. They think that when our body goes in, I'm getting off topic, but I just want to say this last thing. They think that when our body goes in and uses protein for energy, it's using healthy muscle and, and eye, eye tissue. And no, it's using proteins that are floating around in you that are not necessary. So broken denatured, whatever proteins, it's taking excess skin if you have any. It's it's doing cleanup and using that as energy. Why wouldn't it? It makes sense to do because it's there and it needs to break it down. So knowing how much sugar is in your food, okay, 
means that you can eat what you decide to eat, which means I'm encouraging you once again, whether you're eating a carnivore diet or, well, if you're eating a carnivore diet, you don't need to do this. But if you're eating a keto diet, a low carb diet, a paleo diet, a Mediterranean diet, I'm actually encouraging you to still track. Weigh your foods, your vegetables, and track them because you need to know how much is in whatever you're having. And if you don't know how much is in what you're having, then you're not going to be able to make good decisions. Ignore the very bold calorie count that are on the packages if you still insist on eating packaged foods. Ignore that calorie count and search through the fine print to find the serving size and the carb count because that's what you need. But of course, you know, you're hearing me. I'm saying don't even eat them. Eat whole foods. I want you to believe the doctors who are saying that you should keep your carb count under 20. Why do I want you to do that? Why am I saying believe them? There's no profit to be made by telling you that. Wellness warrior, they make nothing. I'm making nothing right now by telling you eat less than 20 grams of carbs every day. There's no profit to be made there. And you can do that with 100% natural foods that have not been processed in any way. I did it. And I wasn't only able to heal my body and my, so my hip. I was, eight, so do you know that? Do you know, like I said it earlier, I was eight, unable to go snowboarding. What was my reason for not being able? It wasn't just because I was fat. It was because I ate so much garbage, so much ridiculous food that my body started to have inflammation issues in my joints because sugar causes inflammation. But also, poor quality oils cause inflammation. I was having both. So I was not able to go snowboarding or longboarding or all my fun activities because I could barely walk. But yet I was able to turn around once I understood this information that you're listening to right now. I was able to lose 70 plus pounds and heal my hip by understanding what I just explained to you. And I actually linked a video um, in the description is written out and I will link it at the end of this video, this live stream for you to watch that video next because it's possible, right? Six years ago, I did not look like this. If this is making sense to you and you want to support me in changing the way the world thinks about food and health, subscribe. If you're already subscribed, then click the button, the like button and leave a comment because you know, do the things.